Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorials on magnetostatics. This is video number 12, and I'm going to discuss the DC motor, and I'm also going to discuss the DC generator. The previous videos to this are written on the bottom left of your screen, and the most important of which is video number 9, where I discussed magnetic torque, and as I said in video number 9, we needed magnetic torque in order to discuss the DC motor. So, let's begin. Let's say that we have a magnetic field which is set up by two bar magnets, where I have a north pole here and I have a south pole here. So we have a permanent applied magnetic field to a current loop, which in this case I've drawn in both orange and purple. So let's try and describe what's happening here. I'm going to place a battery and to the battery will attach a wire which is going to come out and it's going to move to this, this point here illustrated by the black dot. And similarly it's going to come out and move to the right and also connect to another point illustrated by a black dot. And those points I'm going to call brushes. And the brushes are going to be attached to something which I'm going to call the commutator. So let's just look at the left hand side for the moment. So we have the battery, we have the uh, black wire, let's say, coming out. It's going to come up to the brush. I'll, I'll explain the purpose of the brush later. The brush is attached to the commutator. And then we have another wire segment which comes out, has a bit of a bend in it, and it moves up and it comes to what I'm going to call the center of the rotation axis. Now, I've just drawn the wire in different colors, but of course it's still continuous. And we talk about the orange segment, which will continue on. In, in, in a mirror essentially to another brush, another commutator and from there to the other terminal on the battery. Now the purpose of the commutator is to allow for a rotation and the purpose of the brush is to have constant contact with the commutator even though it is rotating. Of course if you had it, if you had the brush and the commutator clamped together then if any rotation occurred then the whole system would have to rotate. However, if the brush is just, as I say, brushing off the commutator, the commutator can rotate and the brush will stay in position and yet any current can still flow from the brush to the commutator without the, uh, the brush having to move itself. So let's consider the torque and the magnetic force associated with it uh, on the current loop and this is something I've discussed in video 9. So let's say we have current which is flowing in a clockwise direction here. So we're going to look at the left hand side of the diagram first. So the current is going to go from the battery, it's going to go through the first brush, it's going to go through that onto the first commutator and down the purple line segment. So the next thing we're going to need to do is compute the cross product to work out the force. Notice that as we look the magnetic field is pointing to the right. So in order to compute the cross product, in this case with my left hand, that's what I prefer to do, I point the index finger of my left hand in the direction of the first component, which is DL. So it's the infinitesimal length segment. But DL, of course, points in the same direction as the current. So I point my index finger in the direction of the current, which in this particular case is illustrated here. Then I extend my thumb perpendicular to my index finger and I rotate my hand so that my thumb now points in the direction of the magnetic field, which in this case is to the right. I then extend my middle finger perpendicular to my palm and that points in the direction of the applied force. So we can see that in this particular line segment, the magnetic force due to the field is going downwards. Conversely, if we go to the length or the line segment here on the right hand side, for the same reason, we're going to have the uh, force on the current segment due to the magnetic field in an upward direction. So as I discussed in video 9, we're going to have a torque. Now if you look at the other line segments here and here to here and then the smaller ones, we'll find that the directions of those will make sure that the cross product basically is zero and as a result we will have uh, we will have, well, the cross product won't be zero, we will have a force but it won't allow for a torque, excuse me. So the torque is given by the dipole moment which I've, I've said is M here but to be honest I've been using the, I've been using mu. So it's mu cross B. 
So torque is equal to mu cross b. So we also know that the uh, the dipole moment mu is equal to I times the vector area. But the point here is this, that in this particular arrangement, the magnetic field on the current loop is going to have a force. And in certain line segments, the force is going to have an associated torque. And that's going to cause the line segment to rotate. So the commutator is going to allow the, 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 the arrangement of the line segment to rotate, but it's attached via br a brush to the current loop with the battery. So the current loop with the battery is allowed to be stationary, whereas the current loop from the uh, commutator right the way around to the second commutator rotates due to the torque on, um, on the, the current loop. And we can see in this case that the torque is going to cause anti-clockwise uh, motion. Now it's going to move anti-clockwise and keep going until it's 90 degrees. So let's look at the right hand side of your screen. So here the magnetic field hasn't of course changed direction. The current loop involving the battery hasn't changed at all. But what has happened is the commutator has allowed the current loop from the first commutator to the second one to rotate and now it is 90 degrees, let's say. It's after the torque is turn, turned until it's 90 degrees to the magnetic field. And here, if we apply the cross product, we'll see that the force is this time zero, meaning the torque is zero. And of course, the magnetic dipole moment is also going to be zero. What is non-zero, however, is the momentum of the arrangement. So basically, it's after, it's after moving, it's after moving upwards like this. It's going to reach the point when it is when it is vertical, but it is still of course moving even though there is no magnetic force on it, and it's going to it's going to twist over. So it's going to be it's going to look something like this. It's going to twist, and it's going to it's going to keep moving. So for a split a split second, there's going to be no magnetic force and no current in it, but it is still going to be moving. And I'm sure you can see what's going to happen next. That this time the current once it hits 90 degrees, it goes past 90 degrees, the current will start flowing again. It will be flowing down the other line segment, however, but it will still have the exact same torque, and it will, torque will be in the same direction, making sure that the whole arrangement rotates in an anti-clockwise direction. So it'll start, let's say, in this arrangement here on the left-hand side of your screen. It'll start at it being flat. It will have experienced a torque, which will cause it to rotate until it's 90 degrees where the current will stop but its momentum will continue to move it past 90 degrees and then it will move from 90 degrees back down to 180 still moving in an anti-clockwise direction until it reaches this particular arrangement. Note the colors of the line segments. So in video, excuse me, in, in illustration one the purple line segment was on the left and now it's on the right. But that does not change the direction of the current, and that is facilitated through the commutator and the brush. So the current is still moving, we'll say, this direction here like this, through the orange line segment, back down through the purple line segment, and back down to the other pole of the battery, or the other terminal of the battery. So the torque direction does not change. Now we call the moving part the armature or the rotator. We call the split collars the commutators, and the commutators touch the battery via and wire via the brushes. So let's recap. For a DC motor, the magnetic torques act on, act on a current carrying conductor, and there is a conversion of electrical energy to mechanical energy. And the battery's EMF causes current to flow in the wire, and the applied magnetic field causes a torque in this case is going to be in a counterclockwise direction. So let's say that the current loop starts in this particular arrangement here on the top right of your screen. There will be a torque in an anti-clockwise direction noting the direction of the current. It will cause the armature, which is in this case the purple line segment, to rotate until it's 90 degrees where there will be no current and no force. But nonetheless there is momentum and this will cause the loop to continue rotating. 
and then the current well i suppose you could say the current swaps direction but really what happens is that it just goes down the other side the other line segment facilitated through both the commutator and through the brushes which means the direction of the torque doesn't change at all and the rotor will continue moving so if you were to look at the, the torque, the torque is plotted versus time there on the top left of your screen. And we know the torque goes to zero when the, the armature is perpendicular to the magnetic field and we get no applied force and therefore no applied torque. Now I would like to discuss the electric generator. So as we said a moment ago, an electric motor, or DC motor, converts electrical energy to kinetic energy. However, the electrical generator converts kinetic energy to electrical energy. So let's say we have a similar setup here. I haven't drawn in the brushes or the commutator, but we have our magnets north and south, and we have from the, let's say the brushes, we have connected them to, in this case, a bulb, Ill illustrated by this particular, uh, this particular bulb here. Now, of course, we need to get the, the whole thing moving. So let's say somehow we get the, the, uh, we get the whole thing moving. So there's going to be torque due to the applied field on the current loop in purple. And in this case, like I said, it's going to be in a counterclockwise direction. Now, you might ask yourself, where is the current here? How do we get a force if we, don't, uh, if we don't have a current? Now, in order to answer that, we need something which I haven't discussed yet, which is called electromagnetic induction. And you can see my videos on Maxwell's equations if you want to discuss that uh, further. Essentially what happens is we must get the armature moving on its own first of all. We, we force the armature to move and thereafter the magnetic field will induce a current and once this induced current is there it, the armature will move on its own. So we can use many methods to get the armature moving. We could move it with our hands for example but we let's just say the armature is moving there's going to be what we call a magnetic flux. The magnetic flux was, is going to induce a current and the current will cause a magnetic force due to the magnetic field. Okay. So all of that then put together will have a current flowing in the, the armature, out through the armature via the commutator and the brushes and into our wire. Now, just I don't really want to get into the details of the generator, uh, but I do think one thing is interesting. If we were to plot the current produced by the generator against time, we see, of course, that it's going to go from a zero value at the start to a maximum value and back down again. We know this, of course, because the uh, because when the armature is perpendicular to the magnetic field, we're going to get no torque and, there's, uh, and we're going to get no current either. So the, the current output is going to be very bumpy. However, if we increase things like the magnetic field, or the length of the coil, or the number of turns in the coil, we're able to smooth out the current as illustrated by this particular diagram on the bottom left. So just to give you an example of how they might, how you might, excuse me, smooth out the current, I have, we'll say in this case, of two coils. I've increased obviously the, lo and the number of turns. So we have one coil in orange with lots of turns, and we have another coil in purple with lots of turns double the number of commutators and double the number of brushes and this will give us a, 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 a generator which will give us an, a, an output smoother current. So the gist anyway is that the field that is applied to your, your current loop is going to cause the current loop to move and that, that'll give you a torque and that's how a DC motor works and for a DC generator it's an electromagnetic induction which causes the current to be generated. So that's all I've got to say about that. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my channel, and you might also give me a comment in the comment box below.